CCTV. <laughs> My name is Matthew Bergula, and today on ECTV's immigration series, we welcome our very own Jacob Flores, who is joined by Sylvia Raz. Sylvia's family escaped the Holocaust by fleeing to Uruguay and eventually moved to the United States. Hi, I'm Jacob Flores, and today we're here with Sylvia Raz to talk about her experience with being an immigrant. How are you doing so far, Sylvia? I'm fine. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for being here. It's an honor. <laughs> so I'd like to start off um, talking about where your parents are originally from. My fa father was born in Russia, and my mother was born in Poland, and they came, they, they went to live uh, as young people in Uruguay, a little country, beautiful country in South America, sandwiched between Brazil on the north, Argentina on the east-south, and the Atlantic Ocean on the east. Mm. So I was the first generation. I was, um, my siblings and me were the first generation born in Uruguay from European parents. And I would like to tell you why this happened. My parents were living in their countries of origin, feeling, I guess, pretty miserable because they were poor. They were, they also happened to be Jewish. So they were victims of uh, abuse in many ways because of their birth. And uh, at a certain point when uh, the Nazis power was rising, they decided to escape from Europe for their lives. So they decided to immigrate to the United States, which was the country of preference to immigrate mm -hmm. because of its uh, history of uh, immigration, mm -hmm. people from many different countries coming together to create a great, beautiful country. And uh, that uh, was in the hearts of most people that left Europe at that time to come, uh, come here and make a new life here in freedom and peace. So uh, when my parents tried to come, there were problems of too many immigrants. And then um, President Roosevelt, I think, was that they decided that they, there has to be a stop to the opening doors to immigrants. So these ships that came with thousands of people escaping Europe were not allowed to let them in. So some ships went back to Europe, tragically, because the people were sent to extermination camps and killed. Mm -hmm. Then uh, other countries expressed their opinions, so many of the ships that were rejected when they came to America <coughs> decided to make a left turn and go south and see <coughs> which countries would allow the families to come in and become immigrants. So that's when my uh, parents that came separately as young people went uh, to Uruguay, which was practically the last country in the continent. It, it, there was Argentina after that. Mm -hmm. So they were accepted in Uruguay and started their lives there, met and got married and started a family. And we were the first children, mm -hmm. the first uh, generation of Uruguayan children. Mm -hmm. So we lived a beautiful life all together in Uruguay. Mm -hmm. you know, my parents adapted in many ways. It's very different mm -hmm. from Europe. The food is different. The philosophy is different. The, the way people dress or talk or behave, everything is different and you have to learn it. Uh, also, when they belong to an ethnic group that's very different, it's very uh, strongly felt. Mm -hmm. 
but we were becoming very good Uruguayans. I love the country, I love the culture, the food, the architecture, everything. Uh, Uruguay looks much more European mm -hmm. than Latin American countries in the north. And maybe that was part of the strange feeling mm -hmm. in the sense that it was just different. You see, we learned history from Uruguayan history books where Spain has incredible in, you know, strength. So for us, Cristobal Colo Columbus was a hero, mm -hmm. a god. Mm -hmm. You know, the conquistadores were amazing heroes. Everything that they did was perfect and there was no contest because we didn't even read about it in the elementary school books. Mm -hmm. For us, everything was perfect. Yeah. So when and why did you immigrate from Uruguay to here, to America, living here now? Well, it has a little loop. <laughs> it, it wasn't straight to America. Um, as I said, the, the world was go going through the horror of uh, Nazism and Hitler, mm -hmm. and six million Jews were exterminated. Millions and millions of Russians and Europeans and Americans and the whole world until they managed to conquer that uh, beast that was Hitler and Nazism. So it was a lot of things that we learned. The first thing I learned that was that I was Jewish. Mm -hmm. And I learned by standing you know, behind the doors, hiding and listening to my parents telling the stories, you know, like my mother's brother who paid for her ticket to make it to America, couldn't make it for himself. Mm -hmm. He sent four siblings to Canada, to uh, Uruguay, but he couldn't make it himself because he had to work to make save more money. Wow. So he, he couldn't make it. He was taken to a concentration camp and then to an extermination camp. We found about that later, after the war, you know. And he was killed with his wife and five children. Mm -hmm. And that weighed very much on my heart and my conscience and my responsibilities. So as a young woman, there was a lot of uh, pressure on people, young people like us, to help building the state of Israel, which mm -hmm. was a, a new state that came up as a result from the horrors mm -hmm. of the uh, extermination. So we decided, me and my future husband, that we were going to get married mm -hmm. and go to Israel. Mm -hmm. And we did that, and we worked very hard for 11 years. We had three wars mm -hmm. in the middle. These wars were hard because they were not like now, you know, kind of clicking on a button, and mm -hmm. you have so, uh, horrible things happen. Then it was like soldier to soldier, yeah. you know, and that felt pretty horrible. But we survived that, and the truth is uh, we came here to stay for a while to the United States. We felt that uh, we could learn a lot and we came for, to stay for two years. Mm -hmm. Things changed, obviously, and we felt uh, invited. Mm -hmm. And we felt that uh, we could bring beautiful things mm -hmm. to the country, or to the world, and we accepted the invitation yeah. and decided to stay. Yeah, so as an immigrant, what do you feel you brought to America with you? That I brought? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope we brought a lot, <laughs> mm -hmm. both me and my husband. Um, for me, becoming an artist, which is what I do, was in a way a kind of therapy. You see, it liberated me. I, it was my voice. I can be a shy person altogether. I'm not a that much talkative or, you know, involved. I, I could say I'm shy, but I can express myself through my hands mm -hmm. with my work. 
and I feel that it is very therapeutic for me, very catharsic, you know, and I have been doing it for a long time, and I have been specializing because, as you can see, I'm an older person. I had different styles. I always was with the people and with the human figure. That was my, you know, privileged, you know, way of uh, expressing myself. Mm -hmm. So it has been changing. For many years I just did mother and child figures. Maybe that was indeed the response to the horror of war in Israel. Mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly I went into the found object, which I adore to the end of time, mm -hmm. finding things that they are worthless in a way are on the way to the trash, giving them a new life and a new expression mm -hmm. and make them say something important to me mm -hmm. about people, about our lives, about our problems, about women, mm -hmm. you know. I have three daughters and a daughter-in-law mm -hmm. and they are all important for me, their plight, you know, for independence to have a voice and to accomplish themselves in spite of being women. Mm -hmm. So what do you, do you, um, what you make out of your art, what is that telling to people? I try to be the bad girl wherever I am mm -hmm. because I like to scream. I, I don't uh, scream myself, but I hope my art tells. And it is indeed about our human condition as people, as a country, in the universe, in America, about women, their plight, you know, mm -hmm. they're acquiring the ability to be independent, to work as much as a man does in making the same salary, mm -hmm. to be able to share with a husband responsibilities. Mm -hmm. instead of coming from a whole day of work and having to cook, clean, wash, feed, ba bathe, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that uh, it's not, I don't feel that it's man's fault. I feel that men in many ways are victims of a society that creates conditions and laws. Yeah. And I feel that they may be as lost as we are many times. Mm -hmm. We need help like we need institutions that can take care of children, of babies, mm -hmm. while the parents are working. I need, uh, we need that the, the man shouldn't feel like he is responsible mm -hmm. for the well-being of the family. Therefore, he is the f force, you know, he is the boss. Because society created Be that, but it doesn't I mean it's the right thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it's a need that should be, you know, taken care of. So it's not uh, too uh, anxiety driving, you know, for men mm -hmm. and too, uh, you know, uh, uh, giving that horrible feeling of being, uh, doing too much and, and not accomplishing mm -hmm. where women are in many cases. And it's also about allowing education, you know. It, it's also about the r different races Mm -hmm. that are in America. I feel that many were exploded, many were abused and used, and they need, like black people, like immigrants, like different people, even like people that are not well, you know, um, mentally. All these people need help. You can't expect people to behave in a very beautiful way the way Americans you behave if you didn't give them an education, mm -hmm. if they are poor. It's very complex, I feel, and I try to, in my art to point at all these, you know, problems. I like to tell stories. I like to figure out things, you know, and sometimes it's something I read in the newspaper, sometimes it's something I dreamt or saw, Mm -hmm. that touched me in a way, 
So I feel that, is, uh, in a way, I feel it's my obligation. In many ways, I feel that I, I feel a lot of respect for artists that make beautiful art. Mm -hmm. You know, I belong to a group where all are very good artists. I just feel that the, at these times where we are facing so many problems, we should face the problems. Uh, so I feel that I'm, in a way, quite lonely. Mm -hmm. You know, doing my kind of political and feminist art, mm -hmm. while I feel that uh, many more artists should be screaming, you know, mm -hmm. and, and doing uh, parades and, and, you know. <laughs> so, just to wrap this up, what message do you want to send to people uh, who are immigrants or about immigration? Well, I it's a very complex issue. So if, if I would to give advice, I don't know if I'm at that point, but I, I would say follow the law. Mm -hmm. Don't become a criminal because that puts you immediately on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, literally, <laughs> we are talking walls. So this wall can separate instead of unite. So keep being yourself and be good and try and, and try talk i feel that it's good to have gatherings of people mm -hmm. that come and ask you know mm -hmm. for uh, asylum but uh, it has to be done the right way not easy mm -hmm. not easy but i i also feel that uh, we have we should have responsibilities. The Indians were born here, and the Latinos were born in Latin America, and the black people were born in Africa. Many of the problems we have now wasn't created by these people. The black people were brought as slaves to this country and abused in a horrible way. Mm. You can't just you know, pass over that bridge and say, okay, it's over, now you have to behave. Mm -hmm. You can't be criminals, you can't be uh, uh, living your way, you have to adapt to America. I feel that the offense of being a slave is the worst offense, especially when you are recognized by your color. Mm -hmm. So you have to be respected and you have to be allowed with dignity to become better. Black people proved long ago that they can be as good or better mm -hmm. than whites. So when it comes to Indians, yeah, Uruguay wasn't in a good relationship with the United States for many years because they felt abused. You know, they, mm -hmm. they felt that all the good they had was taken and not much good was given. So it has to be something that works both ways. You want to give, you have to take. Yeah. And it takes time. We felt, we felt personally that we were very lucky and we feel very thankful. Mm -hmm. Because we also came here legally. You know, we were embraced. We were, we gave, we really gave. Mm -hmm. You see, I hope I gave as an artist. My husband gave a lot, hard work you know, a very beautiful career as a doctor, where he taught already more than 100 American doctors, mm -hmm. you know, their specialty, urology at UCLA. Mm -hmm. So we can only be proud of that, you know, it was given with love. Yeah. But one thing that he did that I'm most proud of is that one day he said, I also have to give back to my country, Uruguay. So he organized a one day workshop just before the American Urological Association meeting mm -hmm. where he taught doctors about the super specialty, you know, that is urology. And he did it for free. Mm -hmm. And that was very beautiful, including mm -hmm. lunch. Mm -hmm. And this has been lasting for like 25 years now. Mm -hmm. At the later, you know, the, the he, he invited his best friends doctors that are famous in the world of urology to teach. At the end, instead of being taught in Spanish, because there were doctors that were 
American <laughs> or European, it became English. Mm. And it started with 300 people that attended. Many came for the lunch. Yes. But it grew, now I think it's more than a thousand, fifteen hundred, I don't know. But it's a very beautiful thing that he gave, you know. Mm -hmm. So we feel that the, if people make a decision to come to the United States, it's because they feel they want to give. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that come from Latin America are poor, good, family-oriented, they want to give also. Yeah. They come here and work hard, mm -hmm. you know? And of course they take, they are poor. It's sad that we have so many problems in Latin America, you know? Mm -hmm. We should talk to the leaders. Mm -hmm. We should vote, should. both here and there, you know, so things get better. That's the tool, that's the arm we have. <laughs> well, Sylvia, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. and. I'm Jacob Flores, and you're watching ECTV. Next, our very own Jessica Yamas will be giving her thoughts on immigration. When the Europeans came to the Americas, they were immigrants to the Native American people who were already here. I started the immigrant show because my grandparents were immigrants, and knowing the obstacles my family had to overcome to establish a life in the United States, I wanted to share stories of other immigrants from all over the world who came to America for different reasons and needs. Unfortunately, immigrants are often the target for discrimination, and this has been the case for hundreds of years. One of my main motivations in making the show was to shed light on the stereotypes that surround immigrants. After all, the United States has become a country of immigrants, from the founding fathers that wrote the Constitution to the people that make this the greatest country in the world many of which came to America seeking shelter, freedom, safety, and the opportunity to start over and create a better life for themselves. The immigrants that come to our country all contribute in different ways, bringing with them a unique blend of cultures. Many immigrants, especially those coming from the southern borders, come to work and they accept the most labor-intensive jobs at the lowest wages embracing the hardships that come with working in the field, sacrificing themselves just to give their children the opportunity to live the American dream. The reason I am here today is because my grandparents gave me the wonderful opportunity to be here. I would like to thank them for their sacrifice. My grandpa would work long hours and survived off of solely table scraps just to be able to feed his family. Both of my grandparents worked in the fields for over 30 years. I wish I had the chance to meet them and thank my late grandparents. So I wanted to say thank you to my abuelitos Nemesio and Flora Llamas. I'd like to end this with a quote that is engraved on the Statue of Liberty near Ellis Island, where immigrants would enter into the United States. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe Free. Thank you very much, Jessica and Sylvia. We hope to have helped you understand the current immigration controversy. This is ECTV. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.